morning, friends, and welcome to our service for today. Today is the third Sunday in Advent, and it is commonly known as the Sunday of Joy, or Gaudete Sunday, and it's a break in the historical tradition of Advent um, from a time of penitence and, and waiting and lament, and we break forth into joy on the third Sunday of Advent. <clears throat> My name is Ramona Samuel and I am one of the ministers here in the Chelmsford Methodist Circuit. You are most welcome to us in this space today. Today um, I'll be helped by some friends in the service and you'll hear from them a little later on. But as we prepare and begin this service, let's listen to some music. Ah uh -huh. 
candles remind us of the light of God coming into the world at Christmas. How many candles do we light today? We light three candles because this is the third week of Advent. Why do we relight the first two candles? We relight the Advent candles of peace and hope because this is a season of peace and hope. We relight the Advent candles of peace and hope because this is a season of peace and hope. Why do we light the can why do we light the candle three instead of candle wimey? We light it because Mary sang a song of for joy when she heard she would give birth to Jesus. Who is the joy of the world? Oh, so that's why we light the Advent candles. Yes. That's why we light the Advent candle. In the beginning was a song, and the song was God's joy, and God was joy. And so, a prayer. Your song is joy, singer of creation, for you are joy. Joy that fills the empty with good things. Joy that sings, sings light into the darkness. Joy that echoes with angelic songs. Joy that births hope in the midst of despair. Open my lips to sing your praise and receive your melody in my life. I am ready for your coming, the coming of joy. Amen. And so we're going to listen to uh, a poem now um, on the word joy. In the beginning was a song, and the song was God's joy, and God was joy, sung beautifully to a world surrounded in silence here now, that joy has come again. On a silent night, a son is given, and I picture God laughing at the irony as he orchestrates the symphony that history's been waiting to sing along to, joy has come. It sounds like angels sweeping throughout a city, whispering God's wonder to the world, but the wait is finally over, joy has come. It sounds like the laughter of a child who was born to parents who had long been barren as it echoes back to the story of a God who always gives life no matter the limitation. We tried to figure it out ourselves. We seized autonomy from God, trying to define good and evil in a fallen world felt like trying to play a perfect song on broken instruments. We all forgot our part and the world became more noise than music, more weeping than laughing, more ashes than beauty and sorrow almost swallowed the story whole. But joy has come. It sounds like the promised one of Israel has come so that all the empty might be filled. Joy has come. It sounds like the pouring out of the fullness of God and the one that is fully man. It sounds like an answer being spoken into the question of a womb, a truth wrapped in mystery, a joy wrapped in song, a God wrapped in flesh for our lives to be wrapped in his. Joy has come. May we join in this cosmic celebration for a child has come to teach our tongues the lyrics of heaven's anthem. May we seek the holy day of the giver, not a holiday for consumers. May we not place our joy in what we can buy, but rather in the one who has come so that we might be purchased. We can find a joy that is limitless and infinite and true joy to the world. For the Lord has come, joy has come through this child, this Christ our Lord. Let us sing, let us all prepare to receive the coming of our King, the coming of joy.
Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior, who has been mindful of me, a humble servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is God's name. God's mercy extends to those who fear the Lord from generation to generation. God's arm is strong, performing mighty deeds and scattering the proud in their most inmost thoughts. The mighty one has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. The Lord has filled the hungry, but has sent the rich away empty. God has helped Israel, the Lord's servant, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, fulfilling the promises to our ancestors. So the reading we heard just now is common, commonly known as the Magnificat or Mary's Song. Now, it would be very easy for us to just look at Mary's song as beautiful poetry, which indeed it is, but it is a bit more than that. It is the cry from the heart of Mary, a young woman who was thrown into this unexpected event, something that she hadn't signed up for, something that she wasn't expecting. And out of that comes this beautiful, amazing song. Her heart was filled with joy. Can you imagine how, what she would have had to do to try to convince her family and friends that this thing that was happening to her was beyond um, her control? I wonder what that felt like for Mary. And I wonder too, if there have been times in our own lives when we have been faced with situations that were outside of our control when we had to perhaps explain to people what was happening in our lives. Uh, maybe we've been going through some difficult time, maybe the breakdown of relationships, for example, where on the, on the surface of it, it looked like everything was fine. And then you have to explain to people, actually, it's not so fine. But the thing I love about this is that out of these really difficult situations, joy can come and it's not because we try to do things or or we we have a plan or anything but it is simply because of god's unfailing love for us it is because of god's faithfulness that in the depths of our despair in the moments when we are faced with unexpected things we can look to god we can turn our eyes on jesus and allow God's spirit to shine the joy into our hearts, to shine a moment of peace into a turbulent situation. Because out of that unexpected thing came a purpose. Now, this is not to say that bad things happen to us because God is somewhat allowing this to happen to us because he has a greater plan. I don't really believe that. What I'm saying is that even when we are facing unexpected situations in life that God can come through in those moments for us and create something out of our nothing as it were because that's what God is God is a creator God created the world out of nothing and God is able to create joy even in those moments when joy isn't really the go-to emotion that we are experiencing and so today on Gaudete Sunday, the third Sunday is in Advent, it is a day to realize that joy does not come from getting what we want, but rather it comes from receiving what God is doing through us, even when it seems like it is anything but a blessing. And so today I encourage you, where are those places that you can find joy, God's joy for your particular situation? I encourage you to look to God and allow God to shine in the, those moments and into those situations so that his joy can be in you and that his joy can be full. Amen.
day spring from on high and cause thy light on us to rise disperse the gloomy clouds of night in death's dark shadow The Christmas story is one that I think we have grown so much accustomed to that there is a real danger that we miss certain things from it, that we lose sight of the real meaning behind the story of God incarnate, God coming as human. And I wonder, how do we sense joy, God's joy in um, the birth stories of Jesus and in Jesus's entry into the world? That's something for us to think about. How do we sense joy in that really life moment 
an ordinary moment of, of birth, um, everyday event. How do we, how might we sense God's joy in those? And the other thing to, to think about is where have we seen God's sign of, of joy in recent weeks or even in the past year, which has been still a difficult year for so many of us. But where, where were those moments that we have sensed God's joy in the past week or in the past year. And in this season of Advent, where might we find joy wrapped up in the everyday events of our lives, in the biscuit making, in the cake making, or the Christmas pudding making, the present wrapping, the present buying? Where are those moments that we may be, to be able to find and see God's joy? And I want to encourage you to look for those moments of joy and to seek those moments of joy and allow God's joy to seep through the everyday events of your life. So let me know, let us know where are those places. If you, if you are, if you can think of things right now and you're watching this on the live, please do put it in the comment section and um, where you have found joy in the last week or indeed in the last year and maybe reflect on that a little bit later today. So we are going to listen to a, a song which is a, a very favorite song of mine. It's um, been made popular through the movie Sister Act and it's called Joyful Joyful. Um, it's from an old hymn, an ancient hymn but has been uh, popularized Joyful, joyful, Lord, we adore thee. So sing along, dance along as we listen to this song. Joyful, joyful, Lord, we adore thee. God of glory, Lord of love. Unfold like flowers before thee. Hail thee as the sun above. Will the clouds of sin and sadness drive the dark of doubt away?
So friends, thank you so much for joining me today. I trust that you have been encouraged and inspired by our service today and that you will go out from this space looking for those opportunities for joy and to give joy, to maybe um, give a gift unexpectedly to someone, get baking those cookies and share them with your neighbors, your friends um, or whoever, and let's spread some joy um, this Christmas season. And so as we go, joy has come for the Lord has come. Be open to its splendor. Be prepared to sing it in your heart. Be ready to receive the singer of creation, the coming of joy. Amen. Special thanks for our service today, the contents of which were adapted from the book Worship at Home, Advent and Christmas by Mary J. Skifferis and B.J. Bo. Uh, privilege to be able to find really good material that we can use. So um, appreciate um, that. So go out there, spread some joy and enjoy the rest of your day. God bless you.